All right, this is the last thing that the uh, things move without uh, out contact. So the last of the um, field stuff. And so again, um, example Z uh, particle accelerators. So um, the Large Hadron Colliders probably one of the most famous ones at the moment so there's a couple of videos about that one on how it works and then another one on what went wrong which is quite interesting all right so a very simple particle accelerator is a thing called an electron gun and it looks so this is what it looks like so electron gun so over on here on the left we've just got this cylinder cathode material so a metal material and it's heated so it's hot the reason that's hot the electrons and that are moving around very fast in there and so you heat it up and what you can get is you can get some electrons shooting off all right so this next one here is a, a negatively charged bit so some of those electrons will get rejected back but ones which have got a fair bit of energy will continue on through so those that have got a fair bit of energy will continue on through and then once they get over here then we've got what's called a pre-accelerating anode so that's just something that's positively charged so when it's positively charged it's going to track those electrons through in here and then it goes through another one called the focusing anode so that gets it into more of a beam and uh, because those that don't have enough energy again will go and hit those so those still who don't have enough energy over here will go and hit this so it's only those that have a lot of energy and then boom off they go so you get um, electron beam going through there and uh, <clears throat> so that accelerates those electrons so down here heats them up electrons are moving around some of them shoot off effectively if you like boil off go through here those with enough energy keep getting accelerated getting accelerated and off they shoot into something so that's a very simple um, particle accelerator the electron gun and uh, the follow they're actually part of just about all particle accelerators anyway back in unit two in well sorry not part two of this the electric field we found a couple of things that the electric field is equal to the force over the charge and also the electric field was the voltage over the distance between the plates. All right, so if we combine those two things together, the, the force over the charge is the voltage over the distance, we find that the force would be the charge times the voltage over the distance between. So we go back here and looking at that here the force that will be on these electrons here depends on the voltages we've got here the distance between those so the feet <clears throat> and the charge of course which is the electrons all right so when we accelerate these particles work gets done All right, the particles are slow, they accelerate, so work is done. So work is done. So in terms of um, electricity, the work done is the charge times the voltage. Oops, times the voltage. Times the voltage that goes through. Now, what what happens is that they move fast. 
So when they move fast, that's kinetic energy. All right, so kinetic energy, and we, we know that kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So if we combine those two things, that the work done is, of course, the change in the energy, and it's the change in the kinetic energy, so the kinetic energy is, of course, a half mv squared, but because the work done is QV, then we get that it also equals QV. All right. And so what we can do is we can use this bit here if we want to find out what the final speed of something is. So, an example. Right, so here's our example. Determine the final speed of a single electron with a charge of magnitude 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 kilo and a mass of 9.1 by 10 to the minus 33 kilograms when accelerated across a potential difference of 1.5 kilovolts. So don't forget that 1.5 kilovolts is 1.5 by 10 to the 3 kilo, 10 to the 3. All right, so and for half mv squared is the work done on accelerating, which is qv, we put in the numbers, so a half times 9.1 by 10 to the minus 31. V squared equals 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. <coughs> by 1.5 by 10 to the 3, which is the voltage. And if we then rearrange that, Work it out. Then we would find that the speed is 2.29 by 10 to the 7 meters per second. So going pretty quick in terms of the speed of light, which is 3 by 10 to the 8. It's around 90% of the speed of light there. So that's going. Um, pretty quick. All right. So again, just a reminder of the effect of the magnetic field. All right. So when a, in this case, an electron. Um, Roots through a magnetic field, there's a force on it, and the force equals QVP. And so, what they can do with these things is they can make these things go around in circles. And here's a bit of a picture of a. Uh... <clears throat> All right, so here's a picture here. So, we've got a magnet with a magnetic field, and these tubes here, cathode ray tubes. Um, as you can see, there's a fluorescent screen there and the electrons bang on the fluorescent screen. And as you can see down here, it's, it's bending. And so the amount of bending is in relation to this force that's acting on it. So, of course, if I put up this dot. All right, so there's a, say a positive charge. Fingers pointing in. So I'll look at this one over here first. Fingers pointing in, thumb up the page, um, hand pushes in towards the centre. And no matter where you go, it's pushing in towards the centre. So these things can go around in a circle, which is quite handy because you can get them to zoom around and around and around and around. And you don't need a big, long, um, straight particle accelerator. Well, I mean, they do have those uh, over... Uh, in Geneva, and they do have straight ones, but if you're going to get it travelling many, many hundreds of kilometres, uh, that's not very practical, so we need to make sure they go around in circles. 
which is what they do at the large Hadron Collider. So the radius of the path, if we put a few things together, that the radius, we did this earlier, depends on the mass. The velocity, Q, and the field. Alright. So, let us now look at a an example of an electron gun shooting things. Alright, so as you can see, this is a real brief, just, you know, this is the brief ideas behind um, a particles accelerators because they're far more complicated than than this but this is the basis behind them all right so examples all right so here's an example electron gun releases electrons from its cathode potential difference goes across this that 32 kilovolts so it's 32,000 centimeters that's 0.3 of a meter don't forget that. Parallel plates, unit mass of the electron is given, that's a standard value, so is its charge. Alright, so we are asked to calculate the strength of the electric field acting on the electron beam. So electric field is the voltage over the distance between the plates, and the voltage is 32,000. over the distance between the plates, which is 0.3 of a metre. And when you stick that in your calculator, you get 1.7, or 0 0.7, I should say, by 10 to the 5 volts for every metre. All right. And so part B, then, says calculate the speed of the electrons as they exit the gun assembly. So the speed of the electrons would depend on the kinetic energy that they have and that would be the work done on them it would be the change so a half times the mass whoops, which is the mass of an electron which is 1.9 by 10 to the minus 30 9.1 not 1.9 by 10 to the minus 31. V squared equals the charge on electron, 1.9 by 10 to the minus 19. And times the voltage, which was 32,000, if I remember correctly from before. Yes, that is correct. And then when you put that in your calculator, do some multiplying, a bit of dividing, and then square rooting, you find that the speed it's going is 1.06 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, so that's getting pretty close to uh, the speed of light, getting much closer to it. Alright, so part C, given that they travel through a uniform magnetic field perpendicular to their motion with 0.2 Tesla, uh, calculate expected radius. Alright, so that was this one here. Alright, so the expected radius would be given by the radius is the mass times the velocity over the charge times the field, and the mass is that of... Uh, a, an electron, 9.1 by 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, times the velocity which we just worked out in the previous part, 1.06 by 10 to the 8. Here we go, there it is. Over the charge, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, because it is an electron times the field, which was 0.2 of a Tesla, so if you whack all of that in your um, calculator, you get 3.01 by 10 to the minus 3 metres, which would be 3.01 millimetres, just as um, a comparison, I 
in your answer, you would need, for the exam, you'd need to give it the, the one above. Um, in the powers of 10, you'd need to give this one. But, so we get a bit of an idea, so that's um, quite a small um, radius of that particular circle. Alright, that's it for particle accelerators. So there's some questions in your textbook about them. Um, don't forget there's those couple of videos on the website and uh, ask if you want. Uh, keep in mind this is really brief, real brief ideas behind a particle accelerator.